how to choose a horse so you can decide which horse would be a good fit for you. With over 300 breeds of horses worldwide coming in all colors, shapes, and sizes, the choices are virtually unlimited. There are three main types of horses. Hot bloods are horses like the Arabians and the Thoroughbreds, which are often used in both the track and endurance racing. Warm bloods are a mixture of both hot blood and cold blood types. A lot of the modern breeds are considered warm bloods. Cold bloods are the large draft animal types, often used for pulling wagons and machinery where strength is of utmost importance. Horses come in all sizes. Here we have the mini horse, Thumbelina, reported to be the world's smallest horse being only 17 inches tall. This Highland Pony is larger than the mini horse, but falls short of being in the horse classification. It should be noted that ponies can be a wonderful choice for children to start out riding on, but sooner or later the child grows up, the pony doesn't, and then you've got this problem. Moving up to the small horse, you can see you've even got a three-seater on this horse. A small horse can be a good fit for a child for many years. For the adult rider who wants to get a job done, you need to move up to a full-side horse that is appropriate for the rider's size. Even though this is a large horse, I think its load capacity has been exceeded. This horse needs a smaller rider and the rider needs a bigger horse, which in this case could mean moving up in size to at least a part draft. This big draft horse could pack anyone I personally know, plus he could pull your wagon to town on Sunday too. We have a fine example of a paint, often called a pinto depending on the breed. This beautiful Palomino mare is a fine example of the richly colored golden horses. Ponies come in all colors. We have a cute pinto pony with a solid colored foal. Now here we have a buckskin Norwegian fjord with plenty of good bone and muscle to pack a larger rider or even pull a cart. The Appaloosa color breed was started by the Nez Perce Indians in the Northwest United States. This horse has a blanket over its rump. Here we have horses bringing in the wheat cheese for thrashing in Australia. I personally saw this similar scenes on our farm in the mid 50s. Now this shows that everybody needs transportation at some time and a horse can get the job done. The American Indian often used his horse for transportation, hunting, even war on occasion. The American Cowboy used his horse like a sports utility vehicle, hunting, roping, herding cattle, and patrolling ranch lands to protect the herd from rustlers. When you had to get out of town fast, the horse gave you the best chance. Here we see a black family headed north to freedom and a new life. The horse was used in agriculture well into the 50s. I personally used a horse to pull logs out of the woods, pull wagons, moving produce and equipment around the farm. Here we have a palace guard in Spain. Not to be outdone, in London, it has a palace guard also on a horse. We have horses and carriages lined up like taxi cabs outside this establishment. They are still a tourist attraction and very much appreciated in cities such as Seattle, 
Victoria, B.C., and even New York City. What could be more fun than having your own little tour business pointing out places of interest to people from the driver's seat of your very own carriage? Many metropolitan police departments have a mounted horse patrol in parks and places where a lot of ground needs to be covered. Use of horses in riot control has proven to them to be very effective because of their intimidation factor. For those that can handle the logistics plus the cost of feed and care, a eight horse hitch competition is very impressive and certainly f thrills crowds. Now young girls really like jumping competitions and there are classes for all ages and horse sizes. As you can see it can be a bit intimidating when coming up to the jump, but for thrills and a sense of accomplishment, you probably can't beat jumping. Adults can get in on the jumping action too with jumping events ranging from the local shows to the Olympics. There are so many show ring competitions for different riding disciplines. You can choose your favorite. Don't want to ride? you can show a pony in a halder class. This ribbon winner is a beautiful Appaloosa colored mare with her foal. Some people prefer the elegance and grace of dressage competition. Others prefer the rough and tumble barrel racing and making that dirt fly. Want to socialize with some friends and get together with your horses? Then form a drill team, practice a bit, and enter some competitions. And maybe even a parade or two. Want to have a lot of fun? Teach your horse some tricks. Then you can go out and start entertaining folks. Maybe even make a little money on the side doing it. Some people prefer just to ride their horse to town every so often for the day. There is nothing better, in my opinion, than just getting out in the great outdoors and riding your horse across the open fields and on the wooded trails. The peace and tranquility are amazing. It's just a great feeling when your horse is waiting at the gate to welcome you home at the end of the day. A horse can entertain you for hours just lying around the field doing what horses do naturally. I guess that's where they got the term horsing around, huh? Be aware that when you're out looking for a horse, they'll be checking you out too. Chances are there will be a special horse that will look at you and make a connection. Then Despite all your logistical planning and scientific investigation, you're going to get that horse. <laughs>